Fishing Freaks, welcome back to the channel. I am glad you're here. I just want to start this video off by just saying thank you for being with me the many years that I have been doing uh, YouTube and fishing. I am uh, so excited this year, as I am every year, when things really start to kick off. You know, we have winter and there's some winter dabbling fishing, but this week right here, this is when it really gets going for me. So I'm actually in East Texas today, uh, which is kind of where my channel started and where I started filming. And it's just a good place to be this time of year because the spawn and fish movement starts a little earlier uh, out in East Texas and South Texas. So we're gonna be traveling around over the next few videos. We're gonna be going to a few different lakes and doing our normal truck camping deal. And you guys are gonna come along with me for my passion for bass fishing and crappie fishing and the adventure and all that. But today we're gonna focus on a lure, a sort of a forgotten lure in my opinion, a boomer bait. And that is the lipless crankbait. Oh yeah, you hear it coming, you know what it is. So I wanna take you guys through, just talk about this bait a little bit, uh, because I feel like with everything forward facing and focusing on plastics and all that stuff, uh, sometimes we just forget about some old school baits that still catch big ends. I'm, I'm at a lake that I've never fished before. I just walked down to the water's edge and I saw a piece of hydrilla floating there that's about all I need to know. I need to know the time of year and see hydrilla, and this is uh, <laughs> this is coming out. That color right there is called cash craw, but basically anything red, there's a whole debate about why red this time of year, but all I know is they eat it. So there's gonna be some fish that are gonna eat this, and hopefully a big one. I'm gonna talk about some of the reasons why I think this bait is really effective and why you need to be throwing it, especially this time of year. So normally when I'm going bass fishing and I find hydrilla in Texas, I am so excited. Just any little bit of hydrilla is, is like, I just know there's life. There's hydrilla gorillas in there. But just launching on a new lake, never fished here before. It looks like there is grass everywhere. I mean, when there's grass at the ramp, uh, it's it's usually everywhere. So then it's, well, where do you find fish in all that grass? That's always, always the problem. So when I'm fishing lipless crankbaits and other moving baits like we're gonna do, I try to look for just something that's a little different. A ditch is uh, is really key. And I know that's really big in East Texas, but it's, it's big anywhere, honestly, a ditch. It's kind of like a, a natural little highway. It's like a game trail for fish. Another thing is bait, obviously. You know, if you're seeing bait in an area, that could be a good place to throw that lipless crankbait. But the unobvious one is just warmer water temps. Uh, shallower water that will have that good grass in it that warms up quickly sometimes that is just enough to hold the fish so there's a lot of different factors if we're in really thick grass like we do have here like I'm just seeing walls of grass on the electronics I like to go with a braid and this is a um, 40 pound right here The lower the diameter in your braid, the better it's going to cut through the grass. With fluorocarbon, I, I do like it if the grass is kind of sparse. If I'm not having to get really stuck in it a lot, then I will, I will go with the mono or fluoro. But if it's really thick, I like the braid. You're fishing this so fast anyways, that the, this is gonna be a purely a reaction deal. The fish aren't gonna really have time to check out the braid. The reel, either way, I like high speed. Just get get a high speed, like at least a seven, but if you can get an eight, you know, eight to one, that's, that's fantastic too. And the rod for both setups, you know, this is a reaction glass rod, but 
honestly one of my favorite rods ever for for doing this is our um is our green reaction rod you know that's a that's a hundred dollar rod it's a seven two that action is perfect it's literally perfect there's some niceties about this glass that uh i won't i won't really get into but just know that you want something kind of medium powered and the whole goal here is i want to be able to cover the water it really helps to do most of the action with your reel opposed to me just doing this the whole time i could do that and when i get a really big patch of grass and i want to rip through it i will do this move my whole you know body to the side sweep the rod but almost all of my strikes that i get on lipless are coming when i stop the bait so i've noticed that over the years and so how i fish this bait now is i will start and stop it I never just straight retrieve it. I'm always stopping it and it gives the fish a chance to, if they are following it or it's coming by, it's just a little, it's a change. It's just a little change and it triggers them. And a lot of times they will just hit it like a jig. When that thing stops, full line twitch, boom. Like a big one just will gyrate the rod. It's insane how hard they hit it. Even though I haven't caught a fish yet, I'm, uh, Pretty optimistic. Just gotta figure out little pieces here. This color I'm throwing is called Sriracha Craw. I like this one when this water is dirty like this. What do we got going on here? We got a little tangle there. Lost focus, lost track. This is this is where I think a lot of people put this bait down. Is they they think it's just a a straight retrieve. You know they'll try it a little bit if there's some grass but don't give it enough, enough time, you know? A lot of people will get frustrated with, uh, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, I got this, got this weird grass. And, you know, there's certain kinds of grasses that are certainly better for fishing this, but you don't even have to have grass. You could have a straight up rocky bank and throw this thing and fish it the exact same way. You just need to be very cognizant of what your lure is doing. And if you use that technique that I'm showing you guys, it's pretty easy to stay in tune with it. Got some little piglets on the shoreline. Oh, they hear me now. Hip, we better run, we better go. Go little buddy. Let's get out of, oh, I didn't even see that third one. See ya, oinky. So I've been out on the lake for approximately 10 minutes. Since I've never been to this lake before, I don't know what the normal uh, lake levels are. I don't know if this is like new stuff in the water or, or I, I don't know. But it looks like a good swim jig, chatterbait thing. I am excited about what is gonna happen this week. We're gonna catch some fish. You guys need to stay tuned kind of like to think about the hydrilla bed as a uh, it's like carpet you know I'm trying to as soon as I feel that my bait is has lost tension meaning it's touched something down there it's no longer falling I am moving that reel quickly because it's like shag carpet and I don't want it to sink farther than <laughs> an inch into that stuff or it's really gonna gonna bury and you can definitely use uh, forward facing for this too. I mean, this bait shows up really well on forward and it really helps to see, you know, the grass line and the little changes and maybe you'll see a depression that you wouldn't see just regular fishing and you could let it drop into that, that little depression and all that stuff. I've done that before too, but there's just something really nice about not using it and I'm able to cover a ton of water with this bait and not have to, I'm not sitting there tracking it or anything. I'm just, I'm just working. I'm burning calories. I'm out here burning calories, ready to get ripped by a toad. 
I want to get clapped back by a toad, baby. I don't know what this is. That's not what we're looking for. That's like an old pad stem. That's kind of what that looks like. Which could be good. Another, well, I don't know. Could be good right now. I just don't like my treble hooks in it. First fish of the day on the old chatter swimmy. A little flavorful combo right there. We'll let that fish go. First clue. Just a lot of debris down there. It's not good for the lipless. This is this is great for swim jigs and the chatters right now. Big pad fields with timber. That's what we got going on here. There's one. You got him. Oh, God, he hit it kind of weird. Wasn't even close to the tree. Well, not even close. Little male bass. Little male bass. Like in that, uh, like in that orange on the happy trailer. That one sucked it really good. So I've had three fish so far, none of them big. Just little males in the old chatter swim. So I just need a change of water, man. I need to move somewhere. It's like sort of confusing. I like what it's doing. I just need to, I think, cover some more water, get in the right spot. You know, if all those were three to five pounders, I'd be honkering down back in here, but just some males moving up. Doesn't get me too excited. We're gonna look at the map, try to find some other uh, areas that we can throw these moving baits. Connect on a large one. Gotta sniff a big one. Number two of the day, guys. So, uh, you know, we started off, we were just kind of getting the lines wet, and then we went up into a, a shallow creek. I was liking it, I was kind of vibing with it. Literally vibing, vibe jigs. And uh, I just came under a bridge. As soon as I got under here, this shallow, shallow area, 61.6 water alerts. Alerts are going off right now. There's gonna be some fish up shallow in here. I know it. Here we go, boys. Oh, here's a big one. Big and on a lipless. Oh yeah. I actually don't think he is hooked in the mouth anymore or he's got it really far deep in the mouth, but I didn't see it. Oh, I think he's got it really far down in his face. Mmm, that's the one we're looking for there. Oh my gosh, it's gone. It's a gone. That's what I was feeling on that braid. It's a really cool bite. I'm sorry I did not get that bite on camera. There's the old five, six pounder right there, boys. Clutch is gone. I'm telling you, big bite. It's good. It's good for a big bite, man. All right, I'm going to hang this guy on the stringer for a second. I came back in this little cut and it didn't look good at first up, up there flipping, but uh, I just I, went, I wanted to go farther back, see if the water got any warmer. It's 61 right here. And I saw that there was grass actually uh, up closer to the to the reeds than when I originally started, which is good. That's what I wanted. I want a little holding place before they go to the bank. They're not quite on the bank yet. And I'm embarrassed to say this, you know, the camera didn't catch it. 
thankfully, actually. You know, I was lifting that bait when I got close to the boat. I've been, I've been telling you guys how I, how I fish it with the reel. And, but I was just kind of close to the boat and I was lifting it and I was kind of looking off. I wasn't really paying attention. And I looked back and I couldn't tell if my, the boat was moving towards the line or if the line was coming towards me. I, I just lifted up and the fish had it. And uh, the fish ate it on the stop, completely down the hatch. So I'd love to see it. Uh, I don't have a live well on the crispy collector, so don't see this every day, but we are, you know, just put a big six pounder on our stringer here. <laughs> uh, it's kind of wild, but look at that. Bit, just a big old slobber knocker right there, baby. This bait just still catches big ones. Interesting bite. Love to see you suck it in like that. Goodbye. You're no longer on the stringer. Now switching to the vibe jig, gear wise, I like a somewhere between six and a half, seven and a half gear ratio reel. Just kind of keeps that nice steady pace. I'm throwing this one on 20 pound line, 20 pound line and the reaction rod, the green series reaction rod, absolutely amazing. It's just perfect. I'm throwing a half ounce, you know, blaze orange happy trailer on the back just to give it that little little pop in this watercolor getting a little bit of fade off on our hydrilla i'm not in love with it let me back out and do another little little run here crispy's doing great guys crispy's doing a great day it's you know five to ten this lake is actually pretty big and um what i'm liking about this is it's kind of forcing me to fish a little differently so you know my instinct today at first I saw some bait balls and things out in some deeper water and I was like ah, eh, you know get out there and throw a jerk bait and an a rig and stuff like that and then you know, I thought you know what it's spring it's hot like spring's coming it's not spring but it's coming it's hot today I want to get the crispy up shallow that's where it's made uh, you know made to do do greatness so I don't know. I'm kind of digging it right now. Honestly, this, this next few days and months set up uh, great for this boat. And I'm going to be taking it into some, uh, some shallow water places and fishing with it. And there's just something refreshing about getting a shallow water bite versus, you know, all winter. And you could fish offshore the entire year if you want to. Forward facing is just so popular. Obviously, I do it. Um, it's a great way to catch fish, but I don't know. I'm just getting back to basics here and loving it. Could I go find a new or used boat tomorrow and fish out of it? Yeah, but I'm, I think I'm going to ride the crispy for a minute, dude. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. I kind of want to challenge myself with that. Honestly, that fish I just caught, probably my PB bass out of here over six pounds it's probably my pb bass out of the crispy tell you what we're gonna get out here with this lipless we're gonna get out here in the middle almost fell in apologize well go catch a big see you buddy just talking to longer's tv we were comparing notes there i thought i had a fish on um that's the nice thing about being in a squad is just got guys fishing all over the place right now and kind of get a feel of the general fishing what it's like and you know just compare notes it's pretty nice oh there's one and he cracked on it good it ain't big but he certainly did give it the old smack roo Oh yeah, little buddy, little buck. Man, that's what's crazy is you get these little bucks and then this is literally where I caught that <laughs> six pounder. On the old Lipola. It's a healthy one, man. Really healthy fish right there. That's a future, future big in for sure. Got the nice genetics. All right, that one was, 
I mean, same stuff, guys. Four to six. Oh, we're hooked up, guys. Ooh, we got a good one. I literally just picked up this bait. And I threw it in something that has been bugging me all day. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's gone. That's a gun down the hatch. Come here. Ah. Oh, it's not a giant, but it's it's a really nice fish. You know, four pounder. It's a gun. You know, I'd I'd fish probably uh, 20 minutes without a bite on the lipless. And I was getting hung in this this vegetation. I don't even know what it is. I, honestly, I've, I've never really encountered it before. And uh, it just looks like salad. And I was like, you know what? I've thrown up there with the lipless a bunch of times, getting gotten caught in it. It's been frustrating because it looks like nice, lush, good cover. Picked up the vibe jig and uh, came through it and boom. Literally first cast with that. So really nice fish. We'll let it go. See my dude. Look at this. Just bright green veg. It's beautiful looking. I'm sure it's really healthy for the lake. Looks great. Love to see stuff like this in lakes. Wish that they were, wish every lake had that kind of shallow vegetation. Same depth, four to six foot, four to eight foot, reeling that right over the top. Guys, let me also explain something about this trailer, this happy trailer, okay? It's called the happy trailer. This bait is is basically designed to be pretty one-dimensional and it's to go on a bait like this, a vibrating jig. That's what it's designed for. So if you put this on a spinner bait or a swim jig, it's really not gonna be that, that nice. So a drop shot maybe it would look kind of cool maybe put it on a jig head and it's not, i don't know but that we really made this to go on the backs of these and it's it's perfectly fit for it and it vibrates absolutely beautiful it's omnidirectional it's a fantastic bait so if you don't have any of those it's a good one use that promo code lfg we're going to change areas for a little evening evening strike and then it's time to go camping All right, last stretch of the day here that I'm gonna fish. I got lily pad stems. They're on the lead in to the way back. We're about halfway in the creek. The math just makes sense. For everywhere else we've caught fish today, we should get a bite here. I'm gonna vibe jig it, and if the hydrilla looks present, then I will also throw the, uh, the lipless crankbait. Backlash first cast it's my first backlash of the day really this bank's pretty interesting because it's it's real flat I mean this whole thing is just lily pad stems in the summer you know for a mile Just flatty McFlat. I'm gonna turn my electronics around where I can see a little bit. Oh, I got one. I literally got one. That's a big one too. I came out of a pad stem and he he rocked it. Yeah, buddy, you're strong. Look at that. Isn't that fun times? Boat sling. In the crispy. There's a nice, you know, three and a halfer. Ah, uh, yes, sir. I love it when a plan just comes together. Barely hooked right there. I was just in a pad stem. I was kind of pulling out, you know, had a backlash. Boom, there she was. There we go. Got a nice little, little sack here. Another thing I'll say. One of the final tips, you know, we started out with 
the lipless. Really want you guys to not forget about that lipless. Because as you've seen today, it has caught the biggest fish. But it shines when the water temperature is a little cooler. So this water's 61, 62. This is almost like soft plastic start getting good. You know, your swim baits and little underspins, throw, throwing your Texas rigs and all that stuff. The lipless crankbait bite, I feel like is, is really hot when water's, you know, high 40s, low 50s, like 55 is really good. You know, once you start getting in the 60s, it's still okay, but you can still catch them on it. But, but that's when I think the vibe, vibe jig gets better. That's when, you know, a swim jig and a spinner bait, that's when those things really get good. And one of the things that I always see every year, it's like when the fish, fish's lips are red, I'll start seeing that when it's cold, throw a red, throw a red crankbait. Sun's getting low, the bugs are coming out. It's time to head back to camp, y'all. We're gonna have some good dinner tonight. We gotta re-spool some, some lines. Gotta get ready for tomorrow. We're going on a little trail. A little trail of big bass. Come with me. Let's catch Sally together. Old Sally. She's lurking out here somewhere. It's her time. It's almost a full moon. Well, just backing into my little spot right here. We've got a mystery on our hands, folks. I put my cooler with all my food out on the picnic table. It is gone. It seems I've got some new neighbors. I'm about to walk over here and ask them if they've seen anybody that, that took this thing. It literally had all my food for the week. I had backstrap in there, rice, various other goods. That's very rude. That's very rude. If someone took my cooler, I'm, that's not cool, man. Okay, just confirmed with my fellow dangler, my neighbor, you know, ET, guy with a machete, chopping down a deal, tying up his John boat. You never know how that's gonna go, but really nice guy. And uh, he said, hey, park ranger come by here about two hours ago, we got your cooler. I was like, I wonder why they did that. I mean, I reserved the spot. Anyway, somebody has got my cooler. It was stolen and we gotta go investigate. We gotta get our dinner, you know, before these rangers head out. They were on a walk, so they just are okay. getting back up there. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This is the time where like no one wants to be bothered, you know, they're going on their walks and they're chilling out and it's like, you just took my dinner. <laughs> I wanted to come back after a nice day of dangling and crack a cold pop that was in my cooler and have a little back strap and rice. It's just fun being on these little fishing adventures with you guys. I like going throughout the day and talking through the, the fishing equation and you know, when, when I'm learning something, I'm, I'm talking about it. But uh, these other little side adventures, man, I, I feel like these things are what, uh, what I meet people on the water or wherever, th these are the things they remember. Like, remember that time, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, that crazy time. Maintenance shed, here we go. Recovered the cooler. They actually said uh, someone was eyeballing it. And it was a preemptive strike to take it and protect it from the ones that were being a little snooty. You never know. I've always been really fortunate at every state park in Texas, really. But uh, you never know. You never know where the criminals may lurk. All right, guys, the batteries are on charge. We got our cooler back. We're gonna be cooking on the tailgate, sleeping inside of the truck tonight. You know the drill. You've seen me do it before, keeping it simple. We're just out here sleeping with the bass. Guess what got it done today on the big one? What we talked about this morning. Half ounce clutch. This one is in Sriracha Craw. Get you something, we got them available. And if you're local, you can even go up to 
our crumb store and we got them in there. GuggenSquad.com. Don't forget to use my promo code LFG. And while you're at it, here's some of these babies. These are nasty. That color, by the way, I couldn't think of it today. It's flaming hot. Today is like, it was kind of transitioning. It's getting geared up for bass to be on beds. Great day today, by the way. A lake I've never been to. Uh, didn't get a ton of bites, but to be able to, you know, catch a six, catch four, catch some nice threes, uh, just catch some nice, decent fish. I can't complain. Next few videos, we're grinding out here. We're going to be on the bass. We might do some crappie as well, uh, but we're doing crispy type stuff. All right, I got some reels to re-spool for tomorrow morning. That's going to be next video. Stay tuned for that. I'm about to go cook some deer steaks, crack a cold pop, enjoy a nice sunset, and I'll see you guys manana. Next video. See you soon.